What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 2. This is an Intel powered mobile workstation that really puts down the performance. This thing is definitely a workhorse, and some of my favorite notebooks on the market are these ThinkPads. This is the P16 Gen 2, powered by the Intel i7-14700HX, which gives us 20 cores and 28 threads. So with that, we've got CPU performance covered, no matter what you want to throw at this thing. And when it comes to the GPU, this is actually using an NVIDIA RTX 1000. It's an eight generation mobile workstation GPU. And usually on the channel, we take a look at gaming laptops. And for sure, we can game on this. We will be taking a look at that in just a bit. And when it comes to the overall design here for these ThinkPads, they really haven't changed that much. In my opinion, they're kind of timeless. We still have the track point right in the middle, the little red control nub is usually what I call it. Very nice keyboard here. It is backlit, single zone, white LED. Pretty large trackpad here with those three trackpad buttons, which is kind of synonymous with these ThinkPads. And whenever I use one of these ThinkPads, I go right to that track point. And since this is a P16 model, we've got a 16 inch IPS display. And this one just happens to have a resolution of 3840 by 2400. So it is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display with 100% DCI-P3 color grading up to 800 nits of brightness, and we've got full control over that color gamut. So if you do wanna go sRGB or Adobe or even P3, we've got the profiles here for professionals, but you can always totally customize your own profile. So that color grading can really get you by when you're doing Photoshop or any kind of task that require really great color grading of your display. And when it comes to the overall specs of this workstation, we've got the 14th gen Intel Core i7 14700HX. I mean, this is kind of a beast of a CPU. 20 cores, 28 threads, eight performance cores up to 5.5 gigahertz and 12 efficiency cores up to 3.9. The unit I have here has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 5600 megahertz. And we've got the NVIDIA RTX 1000. This is an eight generation RTX GPU with six gigs of VRAM. A one terabyte M.2 Gen 4 SSD, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, that 16 inch IPS display with a resolution of 3840 by 2400. It's 100% DC IP3, up to 800 nits of brightness. We've also got a 94 watt hour battery, and this is running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box. I've been using this laptop for a few days, and when it comes to this Intel Core i7 14700HX, it is a great performer. Like I mentioned, my main laptop has the same CPU, so I know exactly what we can do here. That CPU also has the Intel UHD graphics, but instead of using that for most of the tasks that we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna be using this NVIDIA RTX 1000 Ada generation laptop GPU. Six gigs of VRAM, and this whole laptop wasn't specifically designed for gaming, but we will be testing some games because we do have enough power here to game at 1080 and even some older games at 1440 with this RTX 1000 GPU. Mainly, if you picked up a laptop like this, it's probably for work. And the first thing I wanted to do here was show off some benchmarks that I ran on this, like Geekbench. I also tested out Blender, Cinebench, PC Mark 10, uh, some 3D Mark GPU benchmarks. And you know, when it comes to overall laptop usage, this has more than enough to get everything you need done. Email checking, web browsing, photo editing. You can do some video editing on this. It'll do 4K video playback on the built-in screen, or if you want to connect it to a larger monitor over HDMI or even Thunderbolt 4, it's totally possible here. And with 4K video playback, you really won't even need to use that uh, NVIDIA GPU. The Intel UHD graphics with this Intel i7 14700HX can handle it just fine. But the first benchmark we have here is Geekbench 6, and we are in performance mode from the Windows settings. This is phenomenal. I mean, single core coming in with 2647, multi-core 15,079. And this is out of a mobile CPU, albeit we can pull quite a bit of wattage with this thing in high performance mode, but just seeing this in a laptop is really impressive. The next benchmark I ran here was PC Mark 10, and this basically goes through a plethora of different tasks. We've got video editing, video playback, video conferencing, spreadsheets, document editing. Basically, if you do this on a regular with your laptop or desktop as an everyday use case scenario, this benchmark will run through it and it'll give us a finalized score here. We scored a 7,435. So we're really up there when it comes to general use case scenarios for a laptop. 
Next up, we've got Blender, and I use the good old BMW Benchmark. This is one that I always like to use. The file is a bit hard to find over on Blender's website. They've kind of got it hidden, but I was able to pick it up and we ran it here. All CPU with those 20 cores, 28 threads on that i7 14700HX, one minute, 47 seconds. Moving over to Cinebench R23, testing out the multi-core performance for this i7 CPU. Total score, 21,438. And if you take a look at most of the other chips listed here, these are all for desktop systems or even server systems. So given that this is a mobile CPU, we're way up there with this score. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with this RTX 1000. This is actually a card I haven't tested yet. Firestrike coming in a little over 17,000. And of course, we've got Time Spy here with a 7,514. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't sure how this was going to perform when it comes to gaming, but I did throw a few of my favorite games at it and I was really impressed. Here we have Forza Horizon 5 1080p Ultra Settings with no DLSS. Remember, we've got an NVIDIA RTX card. If the game supports frame generation or DLSS, we've got access to it. This is actually kind of the same architecture we're working with in the 4000 series. So yeah, seeing this running up to 190 FPS on this system, Ultra Settings 1080. And if you wanted to go up to 1440p, it shouldn't be an issue for a game like this without any kind of DLSS or frame generation. But there are some more demanding AAA games out there where frame generation might come into play at 1440. But for the most part, I tested at 1080 and I didn't have an issue with any of this stuff. The next game I tested was Cyberpunk 2077 1080p. High settings and DLSS is set to auto. I find with this game here, setting it to auto does give you that kind of good fidelity, even though we're at 1080p. Still think it looks great and we're seeing averages in the 90s with Cyberpunk 2077. And finally, we've got Horizon Forbidden West. Now this is a more demanding game. It's one of the newer games we tested here. 1080p medium settings, DLSS is set to balanced, and I'm also using NVIDIA's frame gen. Again, like I mentioned, this RTX 1000 does support frame gen and basically all DLSS. With these games that support frame gen, I would highly recommend using it even at these lower resolutions. I personally love using frame gen, especially with this game here. And at medium 1080p with frame gen on, we're seeing an average of around 101 FPS. Overall, if you're looking for a mobile workstation, this is something that I can highly recommend. Now the price on these is a bit high, but you know, if you're picking something like this up, you're gonna be making money with it. It's a pretty good setup. I love the CPU performance. The overall design, again, I think is kind of timeless for these ThinkPads. And yeah, I mean, I just love the way these things look. I just kind of wish they would offer this with the black color variant. I think that would be really awesome. It set this thing off. But yeah, really good performer. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description, but that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you wanna see running on this thing, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.